Tom in St. Louis Park, Minnesota. And you'd think St. Louis Park would be in St. Louis, but it ain't. It's in Minnesota. All right. Um, the instant jumps from one volume level to another in digital audio can create high frequency analog artifacts. So to make sure we don't hear those, we use a low pass filter that, for example, only allows frequencies below 20 kilohertz to pass through, uh, hence the low pass name. If that's even remotely accurate, I think I get the noise reduction part of digital audio. What I don't get, however, is how a low pass filter uh, smooths out the signal. A one kilohertz tone, for example, created in analog, digitized into PCM, and then converted back to analog, does not show up as a stair step or a lollipop pattern, lollipop, okay, on an oscilloscope looking at the DAC's analog output. The sine wave on the analog output is perfectly smooth. How does this low pass filter do that? Is it the capacitor in the low pass filter that smooths the signal by controlling the attack and decay? Or is it something completely different? This is making my brain hurt. And I hope you can provide some elite relief for my painful brain. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, this is a question that is asked a lot. And let me see if I can't in the brief three, four, five minutes that I like to do these videos, if we can't explain it. So what he's talking about is the stair-stepped waveform. So let's imagine that we have a sine wave, okay? There's half of a sine wave. And if it's an analog signal, we go from, this is zero volts, right? And up here, I don't know, you know, whatever it's five volts. So there is a complete smooth wave that comes up here. All right. If we're going to turn that into a digital signal, we're going to do so with a series of snapshots, right? We're going to take every 44 thousandths of a second, we're going to take a snapshot of this rising voltage and convert it to a digital number. And then this is PCM. This is not DSD, this is not PDM. So we're just gonna talk about PCM right now. And we'll do another one of these um, maybe on the board. To do that, we take a snapshot. So, and we're gonna break this into bits, right? Like this. So what we wind up with are, let's see if I can draw the, I'm not a very good artist, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, you're gonna break this into chunks. And these are the snapshots, okay? And each one of these is actually squared off. That's maybe a better way to put it. Can we see that? So this goes up here, this goes up here, and we have these stair step things. What this actually is, maybe we draw it this way. Um, there's an A to D converter that takes this voltage, uh, and let's, let's over here, let's just say this is one, one volt, uh, this is two volts, this is three volts, this is four volts. Mm -hmm. four. <laughs> okay, so when one volt comes in, <clears throat> we're gonna have the, the stream that this is looks like this, right? It's just a series of same, exact same size ones, this is a one, and this is a zero, right? And here you got this stream. But each in, within this stream, if we have enough of them in the right order, it's going to create a number. It's a code, pulse code modulation. The code is this word or this group of ones and zeros that equals a number. And that number can go from one to 65,000 or whatever. And that is break, and that is at 65,000. That's the loudest signal we can make, and at one, it's the lowest signal we can make. So let's say that right over here is the number, uh, you know, 2,000, and that creates a word. Well, that that's confusing. That number that came out of here, out of this word, created this 
one volt, all right? So we have a one volt, it just goes like, it goes, it, turn, it turns on, and at one volt, it stops. And then the next one comes on, I'm exaggerating here, at two volts, and at that. And then we go back down, and then we go back down, right? And if you were to average these out, you'd get this sine wave. If that, hope that makes sense, okay? The question is, <clears throat> how does a low-pass filter <clears throat> get rid of these transitions, these stair steps? Well, let's look and see what is that stair step. That stair step is what we call, oh, now I'm running out of ink. Well, okay, that stair step is a square wave. What is a square wave? A square wave is a whole bunch of sine waves, okay? This square wave is made up of lots of little tiny sine waves, a big sine wave, which is the fundamental, and a whole bunch of little tiny sine waves. And those little tiny sine waves, not in amplitude, but in frequency, are very, very high frequencies relative to the fundamental. So if we had a one kilohertz, ah, sorry, if we had a one kilohertz sine wave, I'm gonna put a, the lid on this, if we had a one kilohertz sine wave, then we have uh, a whole bunch of higher frequency sine waves, two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz, five kilohertz, yeah, on down the line. And when you add all of those little sine waves up, you get a square wave, okay? Because this is a combination of the original sine wave plus all these little high frequencies. That makes a square wave. Well, <clears throat> if we put this square wave or these square waves through a filter, which is just a capacitor, let's just call it a low-pass filter. They get much more complicated, but we're not going to worry about that. If you put it through that filter, what happens? Well, anything over, depending on how you design the filter, anything over a certain frequency gets shunted off to ground, gets eliminated. It and, and we could explain later in a whole different video how a capacitor does that, but this is getting way too complicated. All you need to know is that this square wave and these square waves are made up of sine waves. And by putting it through a low pass filter, we eliminate the high frequencies, leaving only the sine wave. So if you took a one kilohertz square wave and you ran it through the appropriate low pass filter, you would wind up with a single perfect one kilohertz sine wave without any of this high frequency junk that makes it square. And that's the same thing we do here. We run it through that sine wave, uh, that filter, and we wind up eliminating all of this, which is just high frequency stuff we don't want anymore that contributes nothing to the music. And when you're done, you have a perfect clean sine wave. Hope that helps. Okay, thanks. <laughs>